Apple says, looks brand new, feels like home. I'm here to tell you more personal touches to your same home. I like that. So in today's video, I want to talk about some of the changes that are made within iOS 14 and things that you can explore yourself. Um, these are just some of the top features, although there is a lot more features within iOS 14. So let me know down in the comments below if you want a full breakdown of what's within iOS 14. But without further ado, let's jump to my iPhone and see what's inside iOS 14. So we now have widgets, and I know Android fans are on the hill screaming. Yo, we had this in 2010. We're on iOS, but thanks for letting us know. Now, to get widgets on your home screen, enter wiggle mode, press the icon on the top left, scroll down, and you can choose between any widgets that Apple gives you. You have the option to choose between a square, rectangle, or a large square, which takes up to 16 apps. Tap on the one you want to choose, and it'll automatically be added to your home screen. You can also hover rectangles over each other and they can be within one stack. You can have up to nine people pinned at the top of your messages app because let's be real, you have a handful of people you text all the time and then there's everyone else. Also, you can see their messages in real time and whether they're replying or not. So inside group messages, you can now directly add someone. So not everyone is spammed with messages. To do this, all you do is type their name and then continue typing their message and only this person will get this message. Maybe now I won't have to set every group chat I'm in to do not disturb. You can directly reply to certain messages as well. All you do is hold down their message and click reply. This is basically the reply feature from WhatsApp, except now it can spiral down into separate conversations. Easier to keep track of certain topics when multiple conversations are going on. You can click on the linked message to view the side message, or you can scroll up within the chat history and click on the one reply or the number of replies that messages have. So another feature Apple's implemented is being able to hide certain pages on your home screen. So enter wiggle mode, tap on the dots at the bottom, and you can select which page you want to be hidden. Once you're done, all you have to do is click done at the top right. So as you can see in the example, the page that had a whole bunch of folders and apps are now hidden. The app drawer or app library is accessed by going to the far right of the screen and it will always be the last page. The first three icons will automatically open the apps and then the fourth icon will open the folder. So as you can see, this is just Apple's way of creating folders for you. And another cool thing is that it will alphabetize your apps if you decide to search. I find the app library to be very useful for people who don't really have a lot of folders and organizes their apps themselves because it really does allow you to find all your apps in the right places, although they can be sometimes a hit or miss. But for me, what I found is I usually just like to use Spotlight, swipe down, and type in the app. It's just easier that way and less gestures. So another great feature is whenever you get a phone call now, it now shows up as a banner at the top. So you can continue using your phone until the person goes to voicemail. Although you can now accept the call or decline at the top. So once you're connected, you can also just swipe it up and it'll be in the top left. If you really do miss the way the old screen looked like where you can't really do anything, click on the top left and there you go. Similar to phone calls, Siri no longer takes up your entire screen anymore. She's much smaller and has more fluid animations when listening and responding. So with more privacy and security updates and just ease of use, you might see this prompt more often whenever you open up apps in iOS 14. This is probably just the way for it to enhance the Apple ecosystem altogether. So next up is Picture in Picture, and unfortunately it does not work with YouTube, maybe with Premium, but I'm not gonna get any big testing that with my credit card. So far I found it to work with Apple TV, Netflix, and Disney Plus. You can make it bigger or smaller. You can drag it around your home screen to wherever you want it to be, although it'll try and stay in one spot. You can move it off to the right or to the left if you don't want to be distracted by the video and you just want to listen to the audio. Good if you're listening to a live podcast. If you want to go back, just tap on it and enter in the full screen mode, and there it is. This also works with FaceTime, so you can pay attention even less to the person you're video chatting. Just like all the other videos, you can drag it around and make it bigger and smaller. The greatest feature, though, swipe it on to the right so you can't even see them. So Control Center has been revamped and has more fluidity to it than previous iterations. Also, when clicking on Home Favorites, it takes up the full screen and lets you access your HomeKit specific devices. You can also access the NFC reader, which I suspect is more likely for app clips and various other NFC capable devices. For example, if you want to transfer over your transit card, you can transfer it over into your iPhone inside the Wallets app, although this is in very specific locations around the world. So now if you're listening to music with Bluetooth devices, you'll have a measuring tool similar to the Apple Watch of how loud the content you're playing is. So now if you listen to music on very high settings, you can see that it could be damaging to your ears in the long term. 
Also with AirPods, if you have the battery widget, there's a new design for your case and pods. So this feature is only available on AirPods Pro and it's called spatial audio. The only test I can find is the test Apple gives you and the only way I can describe it is it just sounds like there's more dynamic range of the music that you're listening to. So there's also new wallpapers that change depending whether it's light or dark mode. So this is per usual with major iOS updates. Also with other devices on iOS 14 and on the latest firmware, your AirPods can now dynamically change between the two. So I unlocked my iPhone 10 and now my AirPods are connected to that. Although if I start messing with my iPhone success, it now connects to that. You can change default apps such as your browser to your choosing or another mail app. But unfortunately, Gmail is not one of the options you can use as one of the default mail apps. So this was really disappointing to see. You can now search for emojis directly after opening up the tray for emojis. So the nice thing about this is you can type in what you want and it'll show related content to that as well. In regards to your privacy and security, apps that use the camera actively will now show a green dot at the top. Apps that use the microphone actively will show an orange dot instead. If you're paranoid about recent apps you've used, you can swipe down to the control center and see what apps were using the microphone or camera. Since I've already opened up the app, there's now a native Translate app within iOS 14 and above, and it's basically just a competitor to Google Translate. You can now take a video within photo mode by holding down the shutter button and dragging it to the right. This is a really nice feature, although this isn't on my iPhone 10, which I think is really weird. So if you try to do this on the iPhone 10, it just takes a whole bunch of pictures, which honestly, Apple makes absolutely no sense. So you have more settings within the camera app, such as mirroring the front camera and taking faster photos. Although, once again, this isn't on the iPhone 10, which is weird. So if you go over to the settings in the camera app, you can see that a whole bunch of settings are missing. Come on, Apple. As per usual with an iOS update, there's new Memojis as well as stickers. Although, I think most people are probably just going to be using the Memojis with a mask. So with CarPlay 14, there aren't many changes here, but the most obvious one is the background changes. So they now change depending whether it's in light mode or dark mode, which also switches automatically. I do think with this update that cars with CarPlay now feel more modern. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video over iOS 14. Let me know down in the comments below what's your favorite feature or feature you wish Apple included within iOS 14. Subscribe if you wanna see more tech content. Like the video, dislike it for your feedback. And as always guys, much love.